We've all lived in temporary homes, and most of them were forgettable. Surprisingly, the same thing has happened to many NFL teams. Whether they were waiting for their new home to be built, ran away from their home city, or their house got destroyed, these next NFL teams temporarily set up shop somewhere else. Short-lived NFL stadiums you totally forgot about is coming up right after this. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. It's not just these optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit that don't budge no matter what. It's also the eight hours of playtime and 32 hour battery life. With over 49,000 five star reviews, you'd think these were expensive, but they aren't. Raycons are half the price of other premium brands. I love using these while I edit so I can shut off the world and that's easy with the new isolation mode sound profile. That's right, you now have choices, pure sound, balanced sound, even bass sound. And you can either isolate noise or go to awareness mode. That way you don't have to take them out when you're on the go. Oh, and we got wireless charging now, let's go. So after this video, go to buyraycon.com forward slash five points from the link below and get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Again, that's buyraycon.com forward slash five points from the link in the description and get 15% off your purchase. It's hard to believe that the NFL was played in a soccer stadium for two seasons, but that's what happens when Dean Spanos decides it's time to bend over all of San Diego. Spurred by the acrimonious divorce between the city and his team, Spanos rushed to find the first place that would take him in rather than play anymore at the obsolete Qualcomm Stadium. Their stay here was marred with horrible attendance, mostly by opposing fans. It was also an alarmingly bad NFL venue with obstructed views and a stale atmosphere. The Chargers, the NFL version of your college buddy that can't ever get their shit together, finally moved out in 2021, becoming roommates with the Rams at SoFi. You might remember that TCF Bank Stadium hosted the Vikings during the 2015 season while Bird Killer Stadium was being built, but you probably forgot that TCF stepped up for temporary duty in 2010 when the Metrodome's roof collapsed due to heavy snow right before a Monday night game. That game would end up being Brett Favre's last. TCF, now known as Huntington Bank Stadium, was plagued with freezing cold temperatures, limited seating capacity, and Blair Walsh. Memorial Stadium in Baltimore served as a longtime home for the Colts. However, it was thrust back into emergency action when Art Modell suddenly moved the Browns to Baltimore in 1997. Way past its prime, Memorial had actually been hosting CFL games right before the NFL came back. The Ravens season marked the end of its life as it was demolished and turned into an old folks home. I would assume nobody who moves in is allowed to use Mayflower as their moving company. One of the oldest football stadiums in America, the Yale Bowl found itself hosting NFL games for two seasons in the early 70s. Yankee Stadium was being converted to a baseball only venue while Shea Stadium was being built. The Giants then played a season at Shea alongside the Jets in 1975, but then moved into Giant Stadium in 1976, where the Jets would eventually join them there. The Yale Bowl might be one of the worst stadiums ever to host NFL games as it doesn't have locker rooms, air conditioning, or actual seats. It still hosts Division I football games to this day. I completely forgot about this. The Carolina Panthers inaugural season was actually spent in South Carolina at Frank Howard Field in Clemson. Though they started 0-5, the Panthers would actually go 4-4 at Death Valley, marking a pretty successful inaugural campaign. The team would move to Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte the following year, where they have been ever since. Bonus fact, the Panthers logo is actually an outline of both North and South Carolina, so the fact that they have played their games in both states make the logo design clutch. Back in the late 60s, after the AFL-NFL merger, the then Boston Patriots were homeless. 
They first set up shop in Alumni Stadium, home of the Boston College Eagles in 1969. Then they skipped over to Harvard Stadium in Boston for the 1970 season. Both stadiums aren't what you would think are NFL standard today, but they are still standing in decent college venues. The Patriots would move to Foxborough in 1971, and it would be another 30 years before everyone started hating them. The home of the UW Huskies served as the home of the Seahawks for one season. After the Kingdome was imploded, the Seahawks crashed on Husky Stadium's couch, while CenturyLink Field was being constructed on the same ground where the Kingdome once stood. Husky Stadium would undergo a massive renovation in 2012, where essentially half of it was demolished and rebuilt. It now looks nothing like what it did when it hosted the Hawks at the beginning of the century. Just like their uniforms. Most of these temporary homes were not as disastrous as these next two stadiums, as this was the NFL's version of a custody battle. When Bud Adams decided to move the Oilers out of Houston in 1996, he'd already pissed off the entire city of Houston. Then he turned around and pissed off the entire city of Memphis, using them as a bargaining chip, setting up shop in the Liberty Bowl. Games really weren't well attended as the city of Memphis knew that the Titans weren't there to last and were treating them like a single mom. The Tennessee Oilers then moved over to Vanderbilt while Nissan Stadium was being built in downtown Nashville where they would move there in 1998 and become the Titans. Memphis still won't speak to them citing that they owe child support payments and money for dance lessons. Here's another one I completely forgot about. The Bears set up shop here in 2002 while Soldier Field was being rebuilt. Ironically, Memorial Stadium was built in 1922, around the same year as Soldier Field. The Bears were absolutely terrible this year, finishing 4-12, but three of those wins came at Memorial, which serves as the permanent home for the Fighting Illini. It was renovated in 2013 and might find itself being used again when the Bears finally move out of Soldier Field. And now for our last temporary stadium you totally forgot about. And these were caused by God himself. You know, Hurricane Katrina was really bad when it blew the New Orleans Saints all the way to another freaking state. When the Category 8, I know it's Category 5, but it should have been a Category 8, storm hit, it caused massive flooding and destruction, nearly ripping the roof off of the Superdome. That left the team completely homeless. In fact, in 2005, they had to play a BS home game at Giants Stadium. Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge was able to host four games in that season along with the Alamo Dome hosting two. Obviously, this back and forth living situation didn't help the Saints as their grades started plummeting and they got into fights at school. I'm kidding. They finished three and 13 that year and nobody blames them for sucking. Literally the entire city was blown the F up. So there you have it, and it doesn't look like there are going to be any temporary homes in the NFL anytime in the near future. Well, maybe until the Rams get sick of their roommates.